Ambition, I actually look at it, um, going back to the Latin uh, root of it, and by which is really to canvas or network or, you know, um, so, so in a funny sort of way, in the modern world, we look at ambition as being, you know, financially successful or successful or, or having a hard drive to succeed. So I really, I, I look at ambition and I don't think of myself as particularly ambitious. I think of myself as a creative, I think of myself as a scientist, but the way I look at ambition is it's really for other people or for ideas. So I want my ideas to succeed. I want somebody I'm working with to be the best they can be or people you see you want to add value. So I, that's where I see ambition in really as in adding value. When I'm working on something, I'm trying to do the best that I can be at that point. Um, but I'm not actually thinking like I'm going to sell a million copies, I want to make a million bucks with it. I think money or um, scientific success has been an accomplishment, not a name. My life is a series of accidents when you follow your passion it leads you in different directions and and then in each of these you push yourself to be the best but you're not doing it uh, you you're doing it with the goal of uh, making that idea success that project a success but you're not doing it to stand over everybody and say listen this is me i think it's my upbringing and and i think um so I was born in england that my parents uh, both were doctors, decided to go back to India to do medical mission work. So I grew up in uh, semi-rural India and in fact at one point my only access to school was by Bulacat, right? So you lived in places where there was extreme poverty and but people were happy, right? But then when I came to New Zealand, when I came to New Zealand, what I saw in working with school children, I still do a lot of work with low decile schools is, and the parents, is a lot of poverty of the mind. And, and so it's interesting, so we may in physical terms, what we have here may be too much money for the poor in India, but there's a sense of joy, a happiness, a sense of purpose. A and I think maybe because if you're exposed to all these things, then you don't have the fundamental sense of, you know, not just even entitlement, but also thinking that I deserve this, you know, because in this whole world, we're all in the same world. And it opens your eyes, I guess, and having lived in different cultures with different religions and things. The other way I look at it is in medicine, I deal with skin cancer, and sometimes you're dealing with the other end of life. And at the other end of life, when I met people whom I thought were really ambitious in younger days, I've never met anybody who said to me, God, I wish I won another election or I bought another car. It was then all about why didn't I spend more time with family? Why didn't I finish what I was writing? Why didn't it? So it was always those kind of regrets and there were those regrets were never about what I think is ambition. So, so I suppose that sort of shapes um, your thinking. And, and I think it's also ju it's just who I am perhaps it was not very, you know, in India when you grew up, your surroundings, how you grow up shapes you, you know, you were always embarrassed to say, you're the best at something because it's simply not done, right? What I think is we are becoming, we're eating more processed, but we're also becoming more processed people, especially with social media, so we no longer think our own thoughts. So I have a Facebook page, not a personal one, because I'm an author, it's a public, so nobody can message me, so I spend no time on it. But what I'm trying to get at is we're so processed. When you look at everything which is comes to us, it's all fed. So there was this f research, which it didn't really stack up as research, but Microsoft, it was widely quoted, so you heard of it, that Microsoft looked at attention spans. And then they said that they, now are, they studied it over the 20 years or last 20 years of Microsoft. And they said that human attention spans were 12 seconds and now they dropped to eight. Mythically, which is never accurate, goldfish is supposed to have nine, right? So, so technically speaking now, so that's why when you open any article now, it'll say it'll take you six seconds to read or ten, you know, and that's where that came from. But what I'm thinking is, you know, how terrible is this that we don't read anything unless we're told how long it's going to take? You know, so one day a week I teach 
writing to Lord Desar school children when I'm in the country. And I just see some basic story writing. You know, you set the context, you develop characters, including your own, and you resolve conflicts. And that's the art of a story or a business or a parable for life. And I really think if you break it down like that, what we lack in our lives are our stories. Even if you have some groundbreaking ideas, if you didn't, if you don't fit the mold of somebody thinks, we think a Kiwi scientist should look like this, you know, in the, typically it used to be a white male, and now maybe white female. What I'm trying to get at is the Obama story, for example. I've, never, I've always said that. It could not happen in New Zealand. You know, we like to think ourselves as egalitarian, this and that, but really, you know, that kind of a story uh, coming out of uh, here would be straight away somebody, I don't know, someone kid totally coming out of suddenly becoming. It's not going to happen not in our lifetimes. I'm here in New Zealand's home, and if you look at what can make New Zealand more ambitious and where I think is we've moved from being very monocultural to multicultural or from being bicultural to multicultural and we've had more diversity with immigration but we still don't have a diversity of ideas.